Pete Calandra here. This video is a recap of last night's music production meet. The simulcast live stream onto YouTube had some technical issues and is unusable and the Zoom audio is not so great. While I do have a screen capture with my Yeti mic capturing audio, that's not in stereo. So I wanted to make a recap of what we did last night so that the students can actually hear something with decent audio quality. We're basically doing a mix of a jazz track with a rhythm section and a small horn section and basic mix techniques. And we already had the first video on this about setting up and getting basic volumes down last week and now we're going to move a little further ahead. So I'd like to take a look at the brass section and I'm going to solo that. And we're going to talk a little bit about panning. If you take a look at a photograph of a small jazz ensemble, let's say an octet on a stage, you're more than likely going to see the piano on the left, the acoustic bass in the middle, the drums on the right, and the horns in the front from left to right. You could see the drums in the middle, the piano on the left, the bass on the right, and the horns in the front. There were many configurations. And had we been recording a live session, we would ca capture it as it actually was on the stage. I think that would be the best way to capture it. But this was done in a studio, and we've got the drums in a nice stereo, and we've got the piano in nice stereo. So we're going to keep the drums in the center, which is more modern mixing techniques, as along with the bass in the center, and we'll have the piano spread left to right stereo. And that leaves us with our brass section, and we're going to work on panning the brass a little bit. So we have basic, there are three trumpet tracks, but we have basically one trumpet track. You can see that nothing plays at the same time with these tracks. And we have two tenor sax tracks, and again, it's really one track. The solo is here. I recorded this 15 years ago, and I would probably make sure that everything was on a less number of tracks now, but this is what the stems are, and it's good practice to work like this anyway. So if we take a listen to what we have here, the Barry sax and the bass clarinet... They're playing a nice low figure. And that is works in concert with the bass track. So from my perspective right now, there's too much information in the center track. So I want to pan something left and right. Now, if you notice, I've got three bass tracks. I want to keep all those panned center, so we have a nice, focused bass sound that's right in the middle of the track, holding down all the low end. So what I think I'll do is I'll pan the baritone sax and the bass clarinet. And what I'll do is I'll pan them not 100% left and right, but somewhere around 60% so that they're wide, but they're not extremely wide. They're pretty wide. There we go, so about 62%. Now let's take a listen. Now, if you're listening with headphones on, you can hear that everything is audible now. Before, when everything was in mono, you were having a little bit of issue with frequencies fighting to, with each other and not making the sounds of this low end be really clear. So doing a little panning like this cleans things up. Now, the other bit is that the brass is a little bit too loud, so I'm going to bring it down a couple of dB. Let's listen to that with the drums. That's good. Now there's something else that we can do with this. If we look at the part, right, there's blum, and then the bass comes in, ba doo ba 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 da. And what I'd like to do is leave even more space for the bass to have its little figure. 
So what I can do is I can do some volume automation. Let me show you this. So I'm going to put a little volume marker right before every one of these notes. Good. And then back here at the end of this so that I always return to the same volume here. And then what I can use is the pencil tool. And if you've not a lot of experience with the pencil tool, it's easier to work with a straight line. If you do have experience, you can use freehand. So I'm going to use the straight line now. And I'm going to draw a nice decrescendo in here, starting maybe, well, let me listen. <laughs> So, maybe at the beginning, maybe in the middle of this measure here. See how we're leaving space there for the brass, uh, for the bass, I mean. And what you can do now, and I like that, oh, I put that in the wrong spot. Okay, so I can copy this here. So from bar three, beat four, and then I can go right here to bar one, beat four, and I can paste that in. Let me copy that. Right, it's just Command V. And then what I can do uh, with this here is I can select this amount, and I can duplicate that. And that's Command D on Mac for Pro Tools. Good. Let's take a listen to the brass over here. All right. We've got trumpets. I want to pan those a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit to the left. So I'm going over 16-ish. Whoops, it's a little too far. And I'll do the opposite with the tenor. Let's take a listen. So what you want to do here is you want to balance out the voicing. You want to make sure that the melody is a little bit more prominent, the soprano voice. But right here, I think the trumpet's just a little bit too loud. So I'm going to use my clip gain and bring that down to a couple of dB. Bring up the tenor a little bit. Okay, so right here. So we've got a lot of stuff going on there. Right there, I think that the tenor is too loud. I like the volume of the tenor here. So there's two ways of dealing with this. I can separate out this area, this clip, or this region, whatever your DAW uses, and I can use clip gain, and I did that by highlighting and command E, and just bring the volume down like this. Oops, that's not the right area. This is the right area here. Same thing. So that's one way of doing it. You could also do volume automation. So you can go to the track view selector, select volume. I've highlighted that area and I'm going to use the trim tool and just bring that down. Either way is fine. 
also right here these two guys are a little bit too loud so these I'm just gonna quickly separate those out and bring those down just 2 dB about doesn't have to be exact Good, and I've adjusted the volumes here using two techniques, just to recap. One technique is to go and look at the volume lane here, and I've done some volume automation, drawing that in. And the other one is I separated out the clips into the little regions here, and I've done volume automation on those clips, clip-based gain. Okay. So what you would do is you would go through the whole piece and you would make sure that these little areas, everything sort of fits in. Now, the next thing I want to listen to is I want to listen to the piano and the bass together when they're playing together. So there's a lot of activity in the piano left hand and in the bass. And I think that there's some clashing frequencies in the way that the instruments were recorded. And I think that I'd like to do some work with EQ on the piano. Now, as I mentioned last in last night's meet, EQ is frequency dependent volume adjustment. With, when you're using EQ, you are adjusting the volume of a frequency. You're either adding more of that frequency or taking away from that frequency. You're adding more volume or taking volume away. So what I would say to you right now is before you get started and really start working through EQing when you don't know what you're doing and just putting up an EQ and playing around with all sorts of parameters, just get used to changing very simple parameters on a sound by using a low pass filter or a high pass filter. So if a sound is too dark, use a high pass filter to get rid of some of the low end information. If a sound is too bright, use a low pass filter to get rid of some of the high end information. So a high pass filter to get rid of some of the lows and a low pass filter to get rid of some of the highs. A high pass filter lets high frequencies through and attenuates low frequencies, and a low pass filter attenuates the high frequencies and lets the low frequencies pass through. So in Pro Tools, we have the EQ1, which comes with Pro Tools, and I'm for this demonstration, I'm using all the stock plugins. I'm not gonna use any of my fancy plugins. So this is the GUI for this plugin and this area here is your frequency graph from left to right is low pitch to high pitch and from bottom to top is low volume to higher volume and right here is where you would select your way your filter and right here you would adjust your filter so this is a high pass filter and as you can see, it turns the volume down on these lower frequencies. The way it's set now is that its slope, or its Q, is set to 12 decibels per octave. So that means every octave below where it starts this curve will be reduced by 12 decibels of gain. So two octaves will be reduced by 24 decibels of gain. Three octaves by 36. So every octave is another 12 decibel of gain. And then you could change that slope with this knob here. So if you pull it down, it's six decibels, 12, 18, and 24. So we want a gentle slope with this. We don't want to do anything radical. We just want to take some low, low energy out of the piano track. We have our frequency here. And you could turn this left and right to change that. You can also drag this left and right. So right now on the piano, I'm just going to play it from here, and I'm going to just turn off the bass and just hear the piano, and I'll sweep the frequency.
and you can hear that there's quite a dramatic difference between this sound and this sound. We just want to get rid of some of the low frequencies. And we can bypass it. We're just getting rid of some of the wool in the sound. And now let's listen to that with the bass. So I just did a little adjustment there. I turned the piano up a little bit and the bass down a little bit. I'm going to leave that right now. And let's listen to that with the drums. That sounds pretty good. I want to show you another little thing to be aware of. Let's say that you've got that little snare hit and it really sticks out. This one doesn't so much, but it's a little loud. What you can do is you could take the snare track and you could separate that out and just bring the gain down a little bit on that. So right here, I can't hear that drum fill. So I think what I'd like to do is go right here. Just that area there. There's two ways of doing this again. Separate that out and just bring the gain up a little bit. Or you can go to the volume and you can just highlight this area here and go to your trim tool and just bring that up a little bit. Again, the amount of detail you put into your mix will equate to how well it sounds. And paying attention to little things like what I just did there with the drums over the course of the piece will mean that you will be less inclined to use something like compression to rein in the dynamics and you'll have a much more natural sounding track. Okay, so right here on the second verse, got the piano. I want to make the trumpet just a tad louder. Just bring that up one dB. And then right here, this piano, from here, to about there. The piano is too loud there, so I'm just going to use clip gain and bring that down a couple of dB. The saxophone's too loud, so I'm going to bring that down. And 
these guys are too soft. You can actually see sometimes by looking at the waveforms. Now, I have a little problem with the timbre and the trumpet. Let's take a listen to just the trumpets. It's got kind of a nasally sound, right? It was recorded in a small space, small ISO booth. So the sound of the trumpet didn't really have anywhere to bloom, and you're really hearing a, lot, a little bit of the room in there, and that's bothering me. So I'd like to get rid of some of that nasally sound, and what I'm going to do is, again, use a high-pass filter and get rid of just a little bit of the low. I don't want it to be so... And again, I'm going to set my slope to be 6 dB, and I don't want to get rid of so much of it that it sounds like this. Right? I can hear that. If I made the slope a little more dramatic. It gets to be too much. So I'm taking a little bit of that low end off from about 255 hertz, just a gentle 6 dB slope. And now I'll listen to that in the track. And the piano's still a little loud there. Let me bring that down. Okay, I like that. Leave it just for now. And what I'm going to do is hold down the uh, Option key, click and drag that EQ onto the other two tracks. I think I want to pan the trumpets and the saxophone just a little bit wider. It's still sounding a little bit center to me, so I'm going about 25-ish. And I'll do the same, the opposite for the sax, about 25. Well, that's 27. It's fine. And you could get really fine detail. So this first note here is really loud. So I could bring this down. And again, you could be very corrective with this also. This is too loud here. Okay. Again, you're going to go through the piece and do all these adjustments and use your ears. You guys don't have tuned spaces, prop most likely with good speakers, so I would recommend mixing on headphones. I don't think that mixing on headphones is the best way to mix, but what I think is that you make the best of the situation you have. If you've got a room with lots of echoes and no sound treatment and you've got a bad pair of speakers, having a decent pair of headphones is a much better way to mix than in that other acoustic environment with the speakers and the untreated wall. Now, let's play around with the bass a little bit. Okay, let me bring this down because that's what it was before. This is my second attempt at making this video. Now, this track here, which is soloed now, is the TLM-103, which is a large diaphragm condenser mic, which we had on the bass by the sound hole bridge about a foot out. And it's not giving me enough fullness. Now, I could... add low end like this. But 
what I want you to do first is get rid of some of the high end and put the high end back in with this other mic, the K184, which is up on the fingerboard. So for this one, we're going to use a low pass filter. And again, this is your slope and this is your frequency. And we're just going to get rid of some of the high frequencies on this bass. Now, I'm going to mute this and I'm going to put that 7 band EQ back in and you'll hear the difference between adding and subtracting. So I'm going to add all this low end back in. With this method here, you're not adding any more volume to the track. The other way, you're adding volume to the track, and if there are issues in that low frequency, you're adding some of those issues as well. So I'm going to get that low end and fullness a different way, and I'll show you in a second. So let's listen to this with the KM184. So we've got the snap right there. And adding the fullness back in. But no mud. It's nice and full. Now we've got this DI track, which is the pickup on the bass on the bridge. And I want to do something a little bit more adventurous here. And I want to add some harmonics and some richness to this because it's a very mid-rangey muffled sound. Let's take a listen. I put that back to zero dB. So what can we do with this? Well, we can go into this area that says harmonic and we can look for something called a sans amp which is a, it comes with Pro Tools. And this other one, Saturation Knob, is also good. Uh, Saturation Knob is a free plugin from a company called Soft Tube, S-O-F-T-U-B-E, I think it is, website. You can go there and download it for any format of plugin. It's AAX, it's AU, it's VST. So I'll just put it in here so that we can A, B the two. I'll just mute it for now. And the way I mute that is I hold down the command key and I click on it and it bypasses it. All right, let's look at this. So this is like taking the bass and putting it through an overdrive pedal of a guitar. And let's see how we can shape the sound. One thing to notice is that the sound, the volume right now, should be the same volume when you're done. So if you start adding harmonics and more volume with these controls, you have to bring the output level down to match this volume. It's called volume matching. And I'll show that as we go along. So I'm just gonna play around with some of these controls. Let's blend that in with the other two mics. No sans amp or no bass DI. So let's go back a little bit here. Oh, it's it's bypassed. Here we go. Off. In. It's got a little bit more bite to it, so it'll cut through the mix a little better. Now, the next thing I want you to do, let's solo the bass again.
Yeah, I did it here. But if you if you zoom in, you'll see that the pickup actually looks a little bit like this. And it's a little bit out of time with the other two tracks. It'll look something like this. Yeah. So what you can do is the attack of it is here, right? This is where the attack of that note is. And the attack of this note is here, which is that much difference. So you take your grabber tool or whatever tool you use in your software, make sure you're on any kind of mode that can let you slip between the grid and just take this and give it an eyeball is fine. You can zoom in and on Pro Tools, if I have the A and the Z, which is key focus enabled, you can use the R key and the T key to zoom in. And you can just drag that so that it's a little bit more aligned. Yeah, that sounds much better. Okay. So let me take a, a just a little another listen to what we've got so far. So all that brass is a little loud. So I'm going to just take my VCA and just bring that down a little, a couple dB. Right, and bring it back up there. Now, the other thing is I haven't put markers in here, and maybe we should have done that first, but there was so much setting up at the beginning of this for you guys, and a lot of it was new. I didn't want to add yet another, another factor to the equation to confuse you even more. So the next piece that we'll mix after this will work on markers, but markers are very important also. Okay, so we haven't added any reverb yet. We haven't added any compression yet. That'll be on the next lesson. I think this is a good place for us to start. Whoops. I think this is a good place for us to stop. This is what we did last night, a recap. And for those of you that are not in the class, if you like this video, give a thumbs up. For more content, please subscribe and to be notified, ring that bell. Please leave any comments in the description box below. I've been Pete Calandra. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.